For my specialist assignment, I decided to investigate the techniques and processes behind creating a convincing digital double for VFX applications. Digital doubles are used for a wide range of reasons in a wide range of films, such as the ones seen on the screen which are Furious 7, The Avengers and Terminator Genesis. Stage 1, Capturing Reference Before you can begin to make a digital double, it is first very important you get as much reference as possible. Following advice from Ray Hanzia and various online forums, I decided to use a 50mm lens. This is to minimise optical distortion and get the most representative images as possible. Because I planned on using these later for photogrammetry purposes, it is especially important I captured as many angles, distances and details as I could in every image. Stage 2 – Photo Reconstruction Once all the images were collected, I loaded them into Agisoft Photoscan. Photoscan is a simple 3D modelling software which will take images and convert them into a point cloud. This point cloud is simply reference points that can be related from all the images. It is then interpolated into a dense point cloud, which can then be converted into a mesh via triangulation. This mesh, because it was generated from photographs, also comes with a texture. It is worth noting that to get a good texture, you must be under even lighting conditions. To achieve this, I had taken all my images during an overcast day. This resulted in no lighting information in the textures. Stage 3, Corrective Modelling So as you can see, the photogrammetry process did not turn out the way I had planned. The reason for this is because photogrammetry relies on finding reference points. Reference points are very hard to find in high frequency areas such as hair. This meant that I was only really able to use this mesh as a reference point. So instead, from this point I decided to use a standard high to low poly workflow. I started by sculpting a base inside a ZBrush. I then taken this into 3D code to perform retopology. I looked at many different references and eventually came up with this topology you see on screen. After this, I then taken the mesh into Maya so that I could UV it, making sure that there was no distortion in the UVs. From there, I went back into ZBrush and projected the original photogrammetry onto the mesh and performed regular sculpting techniques to recover any lost details. Because I projected, I then regained the original diffuse texture from the photos onto the UVs. Stage 4, Textures and Shading when approaching creating shaders for my model, I decided to break it down into sections, the first and most important of which was the subsurface scattering. One key thing to keep in mind is that subsurface scattering is incredibly scale dependent, which meant that the mesh had to be to real world scale, and if it was not, the subsurface scattering would not work. The second section I approached was adding textures. At this point you can see that the skin looks very waxy. The reason for this is, is because skin has both forward and backward scattering properties. The backward scattering properties is the blood through the ears, but forward scattering contributes towards a waxy look which is not appealing. After doing further research, I discovered there were more aspects of the skin that my shader had not yet taken account for. The main thing was the sheen or grease layer on top of the skin. What this layer did was produce a almost double specular effect of the skin, whereas in certain areas of the face there are two specular properties shown. In these circles here, you can see how the specular is very glossy, whereas around here, there are much more diffuse specular highlights. So this meant that my shader had to take into account two completely different specular properties. The areas most affected was the forehead and nose. Because of this variance around the face, I could not simply create a new BRDF. This would essentially create an even double specular highlight around the face, which is simply not correct. Instead. I decided to create a layered shader, one of which layers was just the grease, no diffuse contribution, only specular. Because it was layered, I was able to change its influence across the face, which created a much more natural kind of grease look. After creating the skin shader, I then moved on to creating a hair shader. This hair shader has a hair sampler node plugged into the opacity. This meant that there was no aliasing artifacts towards the tips of the hair, which is a very common problem in CG hair. The final shaders I had to produce were for the eyes. The outer eye is a very simple V-Ray refractive shader, which has a refractive index of 1.335. That is because it is largely water-based. The inner eye shaders was comprised of textures derived from Oliver Wilson's diffuse texture, which you can find for free online via his website. I made sure to make the pupil of the eye fully transparent, as the pupil is just a hole within the iris itself. This means it can give us no specular highlights. Stage 5, Creating the Groom. When beginning to create the hair, I initially tried to use XGen, however due to issues with my account on the university systems, I was unable to save local files which are necessary. Because of this, I ended up using nHair. 
To create the guides for the NHA, I hand placed 158 individual nerves curves. This taken quite some time, however it did provide quite a lot of control over the final look of the hair, as I got to place each individual clump individually. As mentioned before, when shading the hair, I applied a hair sampler node. The hair sampler node essentially samples the length of the hair and allows you to place a ramp on it. This meant that, as you see in this render, the ends of the hair have very little aliasing issues. In conclusion, I am very happy that I decided to study the digital double production process as I feel I've developed many new skills in areas I wouldn't normally have tried, and I am fairly happy with the final output of this project. However, if I was to revisit this project, when I was completing the skin shading, I would have hand-painted individual maps, rather than try to derive them from one original diffuse map, as this would have given me more creative control, and given me a better final output. I would have also liked to explore other grooming tools such as XGen and Yeti, However, because of technical issues, I was sadly unable to do so. Overall though, I am still very happy I did this project, and very much looking forward to hearing your feedback. Thank you for watching my video.